Good? Feeling good about this? <clears throat> I think so. Feeling good to be a couple of white guys talking about a racially charged I was going to uh, bring movie. that up, yeah. Well, uh, there's no getting around it. Maybe if we don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> they won't know. <laughs> how many... How many offensive uh, voices do we oh, end God. up doing trying to cover don't up our even, whiteness? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Canceled. Like Canceled. 14 episodes in. Now that. Now that. People will, people will be on Twitter going, now that was appropriation. I, and they wouldn't and be wrong. we say, we're out. And. Uh, Get out. Ooh. Right. All right, let's start the show. Okay. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Picture Show with Austin and Phil Rood. I am Phil Rood, or should I say Phil Boood? And I am Austin Rood. I'm not going to do that boo sound, but just it's pretend Halloween. I did. I know it's Halloween. We're kicking off our Halloween episode uh, this week. Our, our Halloween episodes. A month yeah, of, our, of scary movies. A whole month. Oh, man. It's quite a lot. Are you going to be all right? You got your, got your adult diapers on so you don't wet your pants? I've already wet myself twice in just Yeah, this but that's episode. not about Halloween. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it's everyday life. It's Tuesday. It's not Tuesday, but... Uh... I don't know. I, I don't know what day of the week it is. I don't know where I was going with uh, that. Uh, it's just your your wet your pants day? Yeah. Okay. I, I got you. Okay. I'm there with you. I'm a little slow today, too. I'm having some coffee. I'm getting getting wound up. We're waking up. Um, Let's skip over what we've been watching uh, because I want to talk about horror movies. We're, we're getting into... We're going to do four weeks of, of horror movies for Halloween, for, of scary Halloween Fun or brutal horror, any any variation on that, right? Right. We we need to set the mood. So I just thought I would a, a good way to kick this off would be let's talk about our history with horror movies. Are, are you a fan of horror? Do you enjoy certain kinds of horror? Are you more of a suspense thriller? Do you like slashers? Do you like none of it? Am I forcing you into this I... <laughs> this theme month and you don't even want to do it? I'm certainly not being forced, although there is a gun pointed at me. There is, no. uh, there is a large man in a hockey mask with a chainsaw standing behind you. Ready to strike. Ready if I don't to just cut you into... Praise two. his movies. That's right. Uh, no. I I don't have a extensive history with horror, but I don't, I'm not opposed to it. I think my main thing is that horror doesn't scare me, and so a lot of it that I've seen, which isn't a lot, but it's, from what I've seen, it tends to fall flat. From the scary aspect of it. Yeah, they're, like, jumping out at you and, like... Sure. Trying to freak you out, and it's just, like, that's the... When that's the only thing the movie has going for it, and it doesn't work, it's a failed movie. I I, I agree. If, um... If the objective is purely to scare you, um, but it's not a well-made movie and it's just relying on like jump scares or, uh, like body horror or, right. or just like the, the Rob Zombie kind of just brutal violence aspect of it, which is like, I get it. It's there to shock me. It, it's nothing I find necessarily entertaining. And especially when I know that it's that like it's makeup, yeah, yeah, like I can't get invested. Um, I'm more drawn towards thriller movies. Silence of the Lambs is one of my top ten sure. favorite movies, uh, and Alien and things of that nature are very. That's sort of what I gravitate I would towards. Call, I would call Alien a straight up horror movie. It just is. Would you? Yeah, it's put in a science fiction, um, wrapper. It's, it's sort of packaged as a science fiction movie, but it's about a monster. It's a haunted house movie, essentially. I can see that. Uh, the second one is more of an action movie. 
But I, I think the original Ridley Scott movie is a horror movie through and through. I, I think the climax of that movie is an action movie, though. Uh, well, the the climax of almost any monster or uh, slasher movie is kind of an action movie. It comes down to a fight, right? I guess. I don't know. I think the sci-fi elements add to it and make it more action-y. I always read the last, the third act of Alien as... A straight up action superhero movie. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I still see it as you know, it's eliminating people one by one. It's well, when uh, it's just Ridley and the alien at that point. That's when it. Well, it's Ripley. Ridley was Ripley, the director. Sorry. What if he just wandered on set and then was <laughs> murdered by the alien? <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> I watched actually on this topic Alien Three yesterday. Really? Yeah. Uh, Who forced you? I forced myself. I had not seen that movie since it was almost brand new. Since it was like new to VHS. I've avoided it just because of what I've been told about it. It's it's not a good alien movie. Um, but it's a watchable movie. But it is sort of like... It's kind of a return to the horror. Uh, after it went alien, horror, aliens, action... Uh, action slash war movie. Right. Um, and then Alien 3 is sort of a return to horror. It's not good horror. It's not like Alien, the the original. Right. And it is very clearly where they stopped putting money into the Alien franchise. They're like, okay, we'll make more. But, oh, but, but you can see the concept that they are trying for. They're right? trying to return to science fiction horror. Uh, it, it's, it's very much a, a monster under, under this facility that is stalking a group of people and picking them off one by one. Which is essentially the first alien. Yes. It's just not done as well. It's, uh, it, it was surprisingly. Is it because it's a rehash or is it just not? It's just not done good. as well. It's okay. just, I mean, the, the money isn't there. The special effects aren't there. Uh, that's never a make or break for me, but it, it does. A, a franchise as successful as Alien at this point, where they just stop putting money into it, and they're like, just bring in a young director. This is a David Fincher movie. Uh-huh. Um, I think it was his first feature. Uh, they're like, yeah, give it to that Fincher kid and cut the budget. Like, everything, the Alien itself is like a lot of stop motion it's like a uh, guy in a rubber suit. No, not even. It's like a stop motion alien. Like, claymation kind of uh that is sort of green screened in there a lot of times sometimes it is a guy in a suit but when they're having it move around claymation could be cool but the way you're saying it kind of makes it sound like it's cheap it's like a throwback to like 50s 60s harryhausen sci-fi uh but but there was no reason for it to be that like we're, but, we're kind of getting more into sci-fi here than horror at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going off on a tangent on Alien <laughs> because it is... I, I view Alien, the original Alien and 3, uh, as as horror movies. Um, I'm with you on the, on the page of suspense, thriller kind of movies. That's more my cup of tea with horror than like a slasher movie, like a Freddy Krueger or a Jason... Or uh, Michael Myers. Right. Um, I do enjoy Halloween, though. The original Halloween, which was sort of the original slasher movie. And also the new remake. I did enjoy that. I did enjoy it, too. Um, I know it's a rehash. It's very weird when they go and they pretend that, like, 50 years worth, or I guess it was 40 40 years worth of movie history just didn't happen. I don't like when they go and retcon films that they did make. It is just yeah, kind of like, it's... you can't just pretend those don't exist because they don't work with the story you want to tell. Now, if you want to keep going in the franchise, you have to build on what you've If what you have made. to explain in the movie how the lore of the previous movies works, yeah, it's, you've it's very strange. as a franchise. But as a, as a regular movie, um, I think they did do well in the fact that like this was a... They, you can almost watch that as... A woman who was attacked 40 years ago 
is waiting to take revenge. Like Going you, through like you PTSD. Can almost, you can almost read this as a standalone movie. They do explain in all. There's a lot of backstory put into the, the Halloween remake. I, I really think you can watch it alone. I think some of the people in my generation who haven't seen you have never the, seen original, the original Halloween right? watched it. Yeah, uh, and maybe it works better on that front if you are completely unfamiliar with the Halloween franchise. Right. the The horror movies that I don't like are sort of like The Nun and Annabelle and uh, what are the Saw movies? Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a Saw guy either. Um, but uh, what's I, the Annabelle? What is that? What's the original movie of that? It's called Annabelle. No, 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 no. That's it's that's the, in a. It's the Conjuring, the Conjuring universe. Yeah, the the first Conjuring movie I really liked. I watched that with you, and I thought it was good. I liked it. I like uh, uh, the one franchise that I kind of got into for a while, and I couldn't tell you hardly anything about it right now. Is uh, the Paranormal Universe uh, found footage kind of? Oh right, yeah. Uh, I watched the first one, and then I'm like, oh, that was kind of fun. And then I was like, I'll watch the second one. And then it's, you start going down this rabbit hole and they get worse and worse. But like, it was something that I, I understand how people get into horror franchises, even when they know they're not good. There's something kind of fun about them. The, The first conjuring movie that I watched was the nun and it has like some of the characters in it. And it's like, it's just, it felt really strange to me, partly because they didn't really explain who the characters were. They were just like, oh, here are these right. people who hunt ghosts. You should know that already. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm a little curious about that franchise anyway, because it is based on real people. The Warrens, I think they are. Yeah. And I, they're sort of like famous fraud paranormal I, investigators i would say it's very loosely based i i, th- I think the i think the the first conjuring is very much like their story as they told it but also like there's a lot of people who are very skeptical of them in that right. community and then with each addition to the story it gets more and more more outlandish kind yeah. of yeah um more blatantly false but yeah no i do like the conjuring though as a just as a film as a standalone horror movie haunted house movie i i enjoyed that movie sure um uh sci-fi horror that you were talking about alien what about the thing uh the john thing carpenter's good. the thing i think john carpenter really did horror very well uh i mean i don't he was involved with the new halloween but yeah he had some kind of missteps when he left the 80s and a lot of stuff that didn't work well but you know as far as uh and again, the thing has those uh, suspenseful elements to it that right. work really well um, with, like, you don't know who it is. And uh, one of my favorite parts is the base they find that's already been completely, like, the Norwegian taken over. Base, yeah. yeah. I like that, like, you don't know the full story. Like, almost like the characters we're with are walking into a story after it's happened. And, and I think that's the crux of what makes a horror movie good it's not the monster it's not how brutal the killings are it's everything that goes on with the characters right in the thing it is not just gore porn exactly in the thing it's it's about a group of men who don't trust each other because the thing could be anybody that's the real horror that's the real scare of it it's not like the head with spider legs which is also super cool yes uh something like pan's labyrinth is almost a horror movie I haven't seen it. Um, uh, okay, uh, it's a it's there's a lot of monsters in it. There's a lot of it's sort of a fairy tale with kind of some horror elements to it, but the real, you know, it's it's not it's not a spoiler. It's revealed pretty quick. The real monsters are these fascists that this little girl is forced to live with. Uh, right. It's it's taking place in the Spanish Civil War. And the the fascist. Uh, uh, general or, or a military guy that her mom has been forced to marry, essentially. And right. and it's just sort of like, oh, yeah, here's all these monsters who are helping you. Here's this human who's a terrible, terrible person. You know, like, it's just... Uh, but there are, there are some suspense horror elements to that, too. Um, we could list every horror movie that we like, but essentially, I, I do... I think the big difference is we're not like big slasher movie people. We're not big body... 
uh, torture porn or or body horror. Right. Fans. I you need to have the story elements to make it work. Exactly. A, a, a well crafted movie, regardless of genre, is good. Right. That's why. Um, and s- some people might disagree with me here, but I'm always wary when someone's like, "Oh, I love horror," because they're typically the people who will see any horror movie, no matter yeah. what it is, and they'll love it. And- I'm not wary of those people. Uh, every everybody has something that they love, and a lot of those people who love horror movies like that will still acknowledge that, "Oh, this movie's bad, but it's super fun, and I like it." Sure. Uh, they're just people I won't really take general movie recommendations. I, I won't I start a movie podcast right, with them. Right. If you're just going to bring up, like, uh, I don't know, Jason in space or, or whatever. There's a Jason know. movie in space? Yeah. yeah, there is. They took it to space. Okay, that's my other <laughs> Halloween pick. <laughs> we could do it. I'm sure we can find it somewhere. Anything with space, I'm sold. Well, uh, that would. What if it ties into Alien? Ooh, uh, uh, Jason versus Predator. Jason versus Predator versus <laughs> Alien versus Freddy. Um, they did do a Jason versus Freddy, didn't they? Yeah. And then they did an AVP. Yeah. We're all connecting it's the dots. All gonna, uh, well, you know, one studio owns half the properties uh, in the entire world. You probably could connect everything. We, we could get a horror uh, Infinity game. Oh, yeah. Infinity War, I mean. Who would be the big uh who would be the big one at the middle of it? Who would be the Thanos of that? Ooh, it would have to be a good guy, be, right? Cuz they're all antagonists. Yeah, but uh man, I don't know. But th- they're also the ones you root for in those movies. Yeah. I want to say Leatherface uh from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think Chucky. I think he mm. would be the surprising hero. Maybe. Maybe. Everybody does kind of love Chucky a little bit. We'll, we'll have to write that script at some point. Yeah, uh, uh, look for our fan fiction to show up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Find my Wattpad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, before we go too far down this rabbit hole and get nothing done about our movie today. Uh, have we mentioned our movie? We have not. I'm going to mention it right now. We went off on a, we went on an early rabbit, rabbit trail, but... Uh, this week, we watched the 2017 horror thriller, Get Out, starring Daniel Kaluuya, Allison Williams, Katherine Keener, Bradley Whitford, Stephen Root, and Lil Rel Howery. So funny, Lil Rel as Rod. Um, right, yeah. This movie is written and directed by Jordan Peele, formerly of Key and Peele, comedy turned horror. We're going to get into that, too. We love him. Uh, and this is a, this is a Blumhouse movie. This is the second Blumhouse movie we've done. Interesting. Uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not always a big fan of them. They're, they're pretty hit or miss. They're kind of hit or miss, but they're almost always interesting. I think we talked about it in, in The Hunt, uh, but they did the Halloween remake, the Halloween reboot. They, They, yeah, they, they've picked up the ball on a lot of horror franchises and I think they're doing a lot of interesting horror suspense stuff that is fun and well crafted. And I think this is no exception. I, I hats off to them for making this film here. Yes, and this movie looks better than most of their films. Blumhouse movies look good, man. They I they don't skimp on what it looks like. It's not like Asylum that has like uh, oh we have a submarine set, so we have to have a submarine in every. Uh, in every movie we make, you know, right. Yeah. Or, or something like that. Uh, you know, they keep it simple, but it always looks good. Austin, this was your pick this week. Uh, I did pick it. Why did you pick get out? Uh, get out is a movie I missed. I was grounded when it came out and there was all this hype. (laughs) You know, I'm a little tired of being blamed for all the movies you missed. I did not blame you. I was the reason I was grounded. (laughs) I'm not good at school, guys. Um, but yeah, I missed this movie's initial release. and I did too. I heard all this hype about it and, oh, Jordan Peele is a horror director now. And it's really interested me. It's just something that I haven't watched yet. And so I decided we should watch it. Fair enough. Yeah. And uh, now that you watched it, uh, initial reaction... I loved it. It was it lived up to the hype and more. 
I oh. I was worried that like the hype was gonna make me think like, oh my god, this is the best horror movie ever. But then it's really just oh, it's surprising because a comedy director directed it. But right, I I do think this is better than most horror that I've seen. I would say, um, yeah, it's a it's a very competently made horror movie. It manages to have a a social message in it without being preachy. Right. I think it does it in a very real and organic way. I think it's coming from someone who's lived these experiences. Absolutely, um, Jordan Peele is biracial, uh, uh, and and I think the experience of trying to be in two different worlds racially, you know, is is probably yes. colored. Uh, I'm I'm speculating here. Has probably uh, full disclosure. We're two white guys trying to figure out. Uh, but but I mean the. I think that's part of the genius of this movie is he makes you feel what it's how out of place Chris is right. in this movie. This I'm a white guy and I understand how not just because I have social anxiety and I know what it's like to be around a crowd of strangers. I understand how out of place Chris is and how out of place Chris feels and how much he wants to run before he knows anything nefarious is going on. Right. It's just he's clearly uncomfortable. He doesn't want to go. Right. Um. And, and that is something that you sort of understand is it comes from bad experiences. He knows he's going to be the different guy when he goes to hang he, out with his white yes. friends. He, he yeah. knows what they're going to say before they say it. Right. Uh, but I, th- I think that's what makes this is the thing that gave a lot of people a lot of faith in Jordan Peele, I think, is, you know, oh, He's not only um, a good horror writer and a good director, but he is able to take this very personal experience and make everybody understand what it feels like. You know, I I understand we don't know exactly what it feels like. We never feel like our ass is on the line the same way. But to be able to convey that to a wide audience, a wide and a white audience, Yes. audience I, I i think that's no small feat i think that i've seen a lot of movies from black filmmakers that are trying to convey the black experience to white america and i don't think that's easy at all there's i think there's very few that really do it successfully that really put you in those characters shoes i think this movie uh it's got a lot of black culture in it but ultimately i do think it's meant for more than just black people it's for meant, sure this movie is meant for everybody yeah it's meant to almost teach you about these sort of things right um do you think uh, that's an interesting question do you think this movie is intended uh for white audience or a black audience or is this just a general that this movie deals with racial issues which sort of eliminates a lot of people who want to go to a horror movie and not think about things that are going on in the real world. Right. But is this a movie that white people need to see and go, oh, shit, like, that's messed up. I never thought of it that way. Or is this a movie for black people to go and see and go, I totally relate to that. Or is this just where those two things cross over? I I think it's both. I think he was trying to do both because... I think calling this, oh, this is a movie for white people would be absurd. Like I, That's kind of a devil's advocate question. I'm not saying right, every no. movie has to be, no, 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 no. This is a... <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, sorry, no Black Panther for you, Austin. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but this movie really makes you understand what it feels like. I think so. I, I, think, I think you get a good look at that. Uh, so hats off to... Uh, Jordan Peele for doing that. I want to talk real quick about Bradley Whitford because he's your boy from the West Wing. He is. Uh, yeah, I, I I like him in this. I think he's a he's a perfect uh, he's a perfect sort of uber liberal dad. It's sort of virtue signaling, you know, constantly trying to let I, Chris I w- know he's one of the good rich white people. Right. Like, <laughs> I, I would have voted for Obama a third time. I mean, it's like, it's so, it's so, per- such a perfect, like, he's laying it on thick, but not as an actor. Like, he's he he's genuinely... acting like a character who is laying it on thick. I, I don't know. I, I just really like Bradley Whitford in this movie. I The funny thing is... 
I recognized his appearance from other movies. Yeah. Because, like, he looks so different now. I know 20 years well, has he's passed. a little bit older, yeah. Yeah, but I recognized, like, his look. Like, I was like, oh, it's the old guy from that one uh, movie I've seen. I don't remember what, but I recognized his face. And then he spoke... And I was like... That voice is unmistakable. It's yeah. so clear. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, West Wing. <laughs> he's great. He's, uh, I think he's a really funny, uh, like a dryly funny guy. He He's like, one of the funniest yeah. characters in the West Wing. He's like a, a straight man, but just like that, that's what makes him so hilarious. He plays that so well. Yeah. And of course he is Eric, the guy who's trying to take over Madison Hotels in... The Adam Sandler masterpiece, Billy Madison. Billy Madison, yes. <laughs> and he's actually very funny in that movie, too. Maybe um, that's what I recognized him from. It I don't could know. be. Uh, uh, that is one of the few really dumb Sandler comedies that I still hang on to. I really, I, I know Billy Madison is just a celebration of ridiculously stupid comedy, but I think it is very, very funny. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Bradley Whitford is a big part of that. I think not only is he funny in this movie, he also he's, he's menacing. scary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What when he's auctioning off Chris? Oh my god! That is, I mean, the implications of rich white people auctioning off black people. It's very is, clear. Is like very, I, it, it is very on the nose and also super uncomfortable. But the way he's doing it silently is just. Yeah, there is a real menace to it because it is the complete antithesis of what we've seen him before. Yes. And and they don't even have to say words in that scene. That right. is what's great about that is they say They're holding up the bingo cards. Yeah. Everything is silent. Um, and then uh, everything... This is only the second time I've watched it. Okay. But I did pick up a lot of things in this watch through. And it's a lot of things that he says, like when he's giving Chris the tour of the house and they walk in and um, the maid is in there. Right. Who turns out to be his mother. Yes. And he's like, oh, the kitchen was always my mom's favorite room. We keep a piece of her in here. And then they, you know, then the maid comes into frame. And it is just like, oh, that's dark. That, you know, like knowing what I know now and watching, you know, I never caught that the first time through. I have a question because um, this movie has been spoiled for me. I knew. Okay. um, I didn't know the full extent of what happened, but I knew they were body snatching black people. Right. So I knew the black people in this were hypnotized or mind controlled or something of that sort. Right. Um, How obvious is it not knowing? Because I felt like it was pretty clear. Like... From the first moment, it was like they're not acting like real black people. Yeah, there's like a um, Stepford Wives or or Body Snatchers kind of vibe to it. Um, I think when I saw it, I had a very loose understanding of what the movie was about. Okay. Ha- I, same thing. I knew it had something to do with like reprogramming black people. So I don't know if that colored what I knew about it, but like the extent of what it was, like a brain swap, like full on sci-fi brain swap. Like I didn't, I didn't know that, but it was, I think just the general way that all the black people are acting strange. They're acting like white people. They're acting like white people, but it took me, I think a little while to catch on to like, well, they're all acting like robotic and weird and then like the guy who's uh who had gone missing the guy they knew right uh, yeah andre when he's like drinking the martini and like oh yeah and he goes to fist bump him chris goes to fist bump him and he just grabs and it's like oh he's an old white guy like and it's yes but like all the thing when they're like sizing chris up and all the wives are like ooh, he's he's hot and like feeling his muscles and like it's just like Oh, yeah. It's super obvious now. But. There's Speaking of that scene, there's a moment in the party right after uh, he walks away um, 
where he's like doing a twirl in front of all these white people. Oh yeah. And it's like, oh, he's showing off the body. Right. Like they all want to see what's gonna happen. What, to them. what they're buying. Yeah. Right. Um one thing that I didn't see coming was the girlfriend being in on it. I Yeah, I think that's the best twist in the movie. I seriously thought she had no idea what was going on. And then when she couldn't find the keys, I thought she, because she was like in distress. She's like, I'm looking for them. I'm looking for them. It's a great play on the trope of got to get the keys out. Got to get the keys. Here come the monsters. You know, like, yeah, but the twist is like, oh, yeah, she totally knows where I I, I thought she was being hypnotized. But um, right before then is when he had found the pictures of her with all of the other black dudes. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what is going on here? I, I kind um, of thought maybe she did that and then had like her they, memory wiped. Yeah. Um, but I I think the first time I saw it, I went back and forth during that sequence four or five times. Does she know? Does she not know? Is she in on it? Is she right. not? It's really and when good. she does the turn and goes, oh, they're right here. I'm like, you bitch. Ah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so maddening. Um, but uh, it's, it's a great reveal. My, my favorite is when uh, he's like, oh, wh- let's go to the car. And she's like, are you okay? Uh, and he's like trying to hide that he's panicking. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. When he says, you got those keys, and she's like, I can't find them. He goes, we'll figure it out as we go then. Like, he's he's ready to, to go. Yeah. And he comes down, and uh, the brother is in front of the door with the lacrosse stick. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, oh. it's it's a great it's a great scene and it's a great tension builder. It's it's a wonderful horror scene. Honestly. It is, and then also uh, let's let's take a break uh, on that note. Right. Yeah. And because uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. I want to drop an ad in here. Okay. Let's just take a break and uh, and we'll come back with your thought. And we're already going deep, so we're just gonna. We're gonna go to the uh, the weird hypnotized place where you, uh, you the, fall down. The sunken place. The sunken place. Yeah, let's go to the sunken place after the break. And we're back. Hello, Dad. Ding 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 ding. ding. That's my teacup. Uh, I, I, I don't How know. are you doing today? Yeah. Uh, ASMR again. Yeah. We're doing it. Oh my god! It is ASMR that hypnotizes Chris, isn't it? It is. Wow. Um. Yeah, so like I mean we we're just ranting about things that we love at this point. I well uh, this, movie this movie does things so great. Um I I have a question uh, about this movie. Uh this is going to call back to, you know, who is who is the intended audience of this movie? I think we've determined this movie is for everybody. Right. Um but is this movie scary? And do you think the level of scary this movie is depends on your race? Is this movie scarier to a black man than it would be to me? Because I think this reflects something that is much more real uh, to a black person's America today than it is to mine. I don't feel threatened. I don't feel like I'm going to be bought and sold. I don't feel like I'm have to if I had to fight my way out of a threatening situation. The worst thing that could happen to me is seeing a cop show up. Yeah, you know? uh, <laughs> like, um, there's a certain level of horror that I think is very specifically aimed at black audiences that they are going to feel more deeply than you or I would. I I think that's true, but I also think that like. Like, I don't know what it's like to be black in America, but I... I mean, that's a point I'm trying to make. That's much better said. Yes. But I do know what are the dangers in I have a an way. idea what the dangers are, I, sure. When that cop car shows up at the end, I'm like, oh no, that's the real enemy. That's the real bad guy. Right. Uh, you better put your hands up. Uh, you're surrounded. There's no way they're not going to believe... You're surrounded he, in blood, and there's white people dead. That, right, that he started all of this. Right, that he is the reason for all, yeah. Uh, I I don't think I have those experiences, but I know sort of the signs. I know right. the dangers that are there. Uh, Bradley 
Whitford did uh, when he was on WTF, the Mark Marin interview show. Yeah. They talked about Get Out. And Bradley Whitford praised Jordan Peele so much for that cop car showing up at the end and them not revealing anything. And he goes, that was in there. Uh, and specifically just the code light show up, you know, and he's like, that is there for white people to jump to that conclusion. You know, it sort of like reveals like everybody knows what this means. Yeah. Without them having to explain it. Like, as soon as a cop shows up, you're not supposed to feel relief. If if Chris was white, you would feel relief at the cop showing up. Right. But at the, at the end of it, the cop shows up and Chris is like, oh, shit. It the just other, got worse. The other shoe is about to drop. Right. And and I think, I think I, that's 100% dead on and it speaks to how brilliant Jordan Peele is. I especially thought, because there's... A sequence in the beginning, in the first act, they get pulled over. Right. Um, well, they hit that deer. Yeah, but... That keeps coming back through the whole they, movie. They right. interact with the cop. They hit Chris, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought that that was... Um, catch, what's the gun thing? Uh, Chekhov's gun. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, oh, now it's coming back in the third act. Kind that of, cop yeah. is going to see him and think that he's done this thing i thought it was going to be the same cop and right. then it turned out to be not that right it's um <clears throat> yeah i mean there it, it is that but it's not that it is it is sort of Chekhov's gun but yeah. it's also like misdirected the deer is also the metaphor for chris or metaphor for black people but also there's sort of like a Chekhov's deer thing too when he, he takes the deer head at the end and <laughs> kills right, Bradley yeah. Whitford with it, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a strange uh, it's a strange misdirect, but also like a great callback, I think. Yeah, and I also like that the savior in this movie is another black guy. Is Rod? Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, <laughs> well, Rod is. Um, I think he's many things in this movie. He's he's comic relief he's the humor we expect from and he is the jordan peele he, right and he is the savior lil rel how uh uh howry yeah lil rel is god he's only in a handful of scenes but he kind of steals the whole movie like comedic. oh my god that scene at the, With the uh police the department police station. <laughs> And, uh, she brings in the other cops. Hold on a minute. And they all start laughing at him. And it's all just, yeah. Uh, but, and he takes like his TSA appointment as like, we're dealing with terrorist kind of shit. Right. Like he's, he's constantly like playing himself up, but he's very clearly like a clown. But at the end of the day, he's the one who does put it all together. And right. goes up there to save Chris. And then at the end, I told you not to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the oh, I told so you so. Good. That I told you everything gets a callback. I told you so comes back. Right. Um uh the I never had a black boyfriend comes back, the deer comes back, the cops come back. E- everything you, comes back around. Th- speaking of things that come back around, when we're introduced to the girlfriend, she's picking out a muffin. She is like perusing Right. To pick something. Oh, yeah. And at the end, she's, when she's in her bedroom, she's picking out she's her picking next She's picking out victim. her next black guy. Right. I I thought that was clever. Yeah. No. Uh, no, that's, I didn't even catch that one. Yeah. But it's... Uh, no, it's all it's all really solid. Uh, the, the brother fighting, you know, you know he's going to end up fighting him at some he point. He puts him in a headlock he like he the wanted MMA to. Thing. Yeah. It's just... It's... Um, it's really... That kid's from... Uh, X Men. He's from the X, the new X Men movies. Is he um, Angel? Uh, I think so. He's from like first he's blonde, class. So yeah. I figure. Um, everybody... Oh, he's Cyclops. Uh, no, he's not Cyclops. He's the. He's the guy who screams. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this cast is like incredible. Uh, it is. Catherine Keener's great. Bradley Whitford. We talked about Stephen Root as the black guy, or not the black guy. The blind guy. The blind guy. Who bought yeah. the black guy. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, um, and uh, Daniel Kaluuya is, I, did you recognize him? He's a British actor. 
Uh, he was in an episode of Black Mirror. I was he in the one where um, it's like they exercise yes. to gain points. Yes, <laughs> I thought so. I thought I recognized <laughs> that is, him. That is him. He's uh, also in. Um, he's in Black Panther. Yes, and a show called Psych. Uh, oh, okay. It's like a. Um, it's like a detective show, right? Yeah, he's yeah. like it's like Monk. He's yeah, sort of. He's really smart, but he's pretending to be a psychic. Okay. Because they won't believe that he's that smart or something. All right. Uh, but yeah, he's one of the characters on that show. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that show, so. One of my friends watches it, so. Fair enough. Osmosis. Uh, but no, I, I think he put a, a great cast together, and it all walks that line between comedy and horror really well. I think both of these, like Catherine Keener has been in some great comedy. She's in The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Right. Uh, she's in a movie we watched for Brokebot Mountain called um, Being John Malkovich. Uh, she's just, I think she's a great actress, honestly. And uh, she's great in this. Uh, she's, yeah, she's super charming. She's very charismatic, but she's also kind of like a no nut. She looks a little sad in this. Like, she knows what they're doing is wrong. But she still, like, participates in it. Yeah, there's know? a few moments where I'm like, is she feeling guilty? Yeah. Yeah, when, when Chris comes up, when they come up... Uh, back into the house. Back into the house. She's looking, like, super sad. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's... it's she. I, I think she conveys all that stuff really good. She also has a real small part in Where the Wild Things Are. The, the movie. I, the live action I know movie. what you're talking about. Yeah, she's the mom. She's Max's mom in that. Interesting. Um, and then she is also in, at the same time, Spike Jones, who made that movie, did uh, a documentary, like a short documentary about uh, Maurice Sendak, who wrote the, the book, Where the Wild Things Are. Right. Um, and she she makes an appearance in that, too, where she and Maurice Sendak were good friends and stuff like that. But it was all, it's. I mean, this is all another rabbit hole but um basically a great cast uh it, yeah uh and i was gonna just prop up that maurice sendak documentary but i can't remember what it's called anyway it's amazing it's Sp- look up spike jones you'll find it but yeah okay uh, this is a great cast steven root uh i love him he is in so much stuff and he's always every time he shows up you just go yes steven root he's awesome he's great i love him <laughs> Uh, second time I've seen him play a blind guy. The first was in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? by, by the Coen brothers. I think this is the first thing I've seen him in. I doubt very much this is the first thing you've seen him in. Steven Root is in so much stuff. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you just don't notice him. He's kind of an everyman. But uh, okay. uh, Office Space, uh, he does so much Coen brothers work. Uh, he was in King of the Hill. Uh, you ever see King of the Hill? The, the animated the cartoon? show? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's the... Well, how would I recognize him from that? Oh, uh, his voice kind of is... Yeah, I mean, he's voice acting, but it's still kind of Steven Root. But Okay. But yeah, uh, the horror comedy line. I want to talk about that real quick, because I think this movie does it really well. Uh, it, with Lil Rel, of course. But also, there's like just so much charm in, like, before everything goes south, like, Chris and Rose have... There's like a playfulness to it. It's cute. They're they're right. I think it's hard to sell a relationship and make it look authentic. And this puts a lot of like little ticks and them jiving at each other and they, things they like that. They put the work in. Absolutely. I think they they formed a relationship here. I I think the reason the horror works so well is because they have that comedy, that romance, right? The sadness. He does all the emotion in this story really well. He captures. Everything the characters are thinking and saying, or not saying, what right. they're just in the expression and the uh, soundtrack is really good, too. It is. It all ties together. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, as far as, like, the relationship aspect goes, like, you can tell how damaging this is for Chris. But he's never going to, like, trust. They'll probably never date a white woman again. Uh, like, that's <laughs> out the window. Like, but, like, that he... He went into this weekend with trepidation about it and, you know, that he was really involved with this girl, with, with Rose. That right. he really was in love with her. And and then it turns out like, oh, this all turned on me. 
Right. Uh, uh, so, and I don't think you get that without them building the actual relationship and making it look credible. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's no stakes to it. I I think. Um, can we talk about how all of this sci-fi and the horror and like the exaggerated, all of that is tied into real world microaggressions and how that plays out because, uh, one of Go for it, Snowflake. Talk about it. Okay. (laughs) Is that a white joke? Uh, (laughs) one of the things about Rose is she... She's very charming, uh, and she seems like a great girlfriend, and she even stands up for him. But also, she doesn't listen to him. He wants to leave, and she, like, manipulates him into being like, stay. Um, And then there's, like, she doesn't stand up to her family when they're being racist at the dinner. Um, She waits until they're in the room to be like, isn't that so messed up? Whereas she was willing to confront a cop, but not her own family. Uh, Right. And it's like these real things that are small, but when they add up, it's almost like the metaphor here is like, when you're in an interracial couple, you can look past all that, and then suddenly they'll like slap you in the face with something, and you'll be like, oh, they really never saw me as equal, or... There has always been this thing about them that. That's interesting. Are you saying that you think that is a plot device that Jordan Peele is is kind of getting more mileage out of to also make it a metaphor for like real life? Because I mean, I think it, this whole movie is a metaphor. Well, for the, the race whole movie relations. is a metaphor for race relations. I mean, that's very obvious. That's very. I don't know that it's even a metaphor. It's it's very on the surface. It's what right. this movie is blatantly about. But I'm saying is the because there are are plot reasons that she acts this way. There are she 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 ignores what he wants because she has to keep him there because that's her job is to be the honey trap for for bringing black men out to this isolated manner where they right, can do whatever yeah. they want to them and sell them and, and do all that. But, but I'm, I'm asking aside from the plot reasons, do you think that it was intentional for Jordan Peele to, do you think he was intentionally making a metaphor for these small little aside aggressions? I mean, we all a hundred percent. I, we all ignore this is a poor excuse. I'm not saying it's right. We all ignore, we all stand up to strangers about these things more than we do our own families because it's uncomfortable because we don't have to go to Thanksgiving dinner with that cop. We don't have to go to Thanksgiving dinner with the jerk at work who won't stop putting down black people. I do have to go to Thanksgiving dinner with my uncle who's racist on Facebook say, I'm just, yes. I'm not calling anyone in my family out. I'm the, the royal we, but we all know we all have these people. But yes, there are, there are certain things with, with, I, fa- I with family, this... we all choose our battles a little bit, uh, just in the interest of keeping peace. Is that right or wrong? That's a really interesting discussion to have because there are, there are family members I have had who have very antiquated views on race and sexuality and religion. And some of them I've just said, that's just how they are. Nothing I say is going to change them. I'm not going to agree with them. I'm not going to engage them in it. I'm just going to let them sit in the corner and be a bigoted POS. Right. Um, But I think it gets more complicated when you have a partner who is of a different race. Sure. Because then suddenly... It's not about you. It's about your partner and they it don't... Is a, it is about you at that it, point, too. It is, right. yes. If they don't feel comfortable around your family, then that's an issue. But you have to take it up with the family. Yes. Right. And so I think everything in this movie is intentional. And I don't think that's an exception. It's a very small thing. And I think there are more egregious examples of microaggressions with... Uh, with selling black people. 
Well, that's not even a microaggression. No, yes, I'm joking. Yes. <laughs> but but with the people who are the buyers, um, right? They are. You can look at this movie. Pretty much everything in this movie, you can look at. Okay, this is the plot reason for this, but then this is also the real world thing sure, of what they do. Yeah. And one of the things that I think comes from that is when he asks why they're doing this. And the blind guy says, there's many reasons. Some, pe- some people think black is in fashion. Some people right. think uh, it's better. They're physically... Right. I mean, his uh, Bradley Whitford's dad was beaten by Jesse Owens. You know? Right. Is essentially saying, like, I, I can be a world-class athlete and I'll still never be faster than a black man. So he wanted to be... Like, yeah. they, he talks about it in that video. He's say, saying, like... With our intellect and your physical, like the dad is, the or the grandpa, the grandpa, yeah, is actually just blatantly saying he's like, with our, you know, brains and your, uh, your physical gifts, you know, we'll, we'll be, we'll be the greatest, basically, you know, like sure. that's, that's sort of his whole thing is like we're we're mentally superior, but you're physically superior, and this merges the two. It's such a very uncomfortable. It's very clearly wrong thing, but it's also like this weird thing of like he means it as a compliment. That's the thing with all the the rich people who come to to bid on Chris. They're all sort of I don't want to say they're well intended, but they think they're being complimentary towards black people. Like they, yeah, they don't see the problem, and that's right. that's what this is. I think it's a metaphor for like how politicians use black people and it's like sometimes they want your vote oh politicians for sure there's that and then there's like um cultural appropriation and things like this i think that's what this movie is trying to talk about look just because an old white man is wearing a young black man's body don't call it cultural appropriation it's just you know it's like an honor for that they need to share this is a joke by the way everybody yes in case (laughs) case that wasn't clear (laughs) I might cut that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I think uh, you make some really solid points that there's a lot more um, subtlety to to this movie than, I mean, for me, I'm seeing a lot of what's on the surface, maybe something that's just below the surface, but all the subtlety through there is, you're saying it's very much intended. Yes. Uh whether it's intended or it's just sort of like a very fortunate byproduct of the way this movie is put together, you know, it's there. It it's is. there. And I, th- I think that's a really sharp eye to pick that up. Um, I think, uh, I don't want to, well, I, I don't want to take credit for all of this. Cause I did read an interview last night of Jordan Peele. Okay. But, but um, he mentioned, um, specifically that he was coming for, he didn't want to show like the obvious, like I hate black people type of racism. No, no. He I wanted to point out work. these yeah. more subtle, these people who are liberals who are like, right. I love Obama. Uh, I love black people, but they don't see the damage they're doing. I think there's a lot of, um, <sighs> brace yourself. I'm going to take this back to the hunt. Okay. The hunt is about extreme liberals who think that they're so righteous in what they do that their despicable behavior. You know what I mean? Like the hunt, the bad guys in the hunt are these uh, liberal sort of rich liberal white saviors, right? Right. Who think they're okay because they're hunting racists. And they think that's okay. They think it's okay to murder people because they're hunting people that they say are are they're sort of like well intended but they don't really know how to relate to anybody who's not in their class good intentions bad bad uh, execution yes right and in the same way like this class of rich people rich liberal elites think that oh we're we're providing a better life for black people we're we're you know what i mean like they get to live yeah. in this you know there's a very there's a very sort of similar thing about like vilifying rich liberals who really don't understand 
the complexities of real people. They're disconnected. They're from disconnected reality. from reality. That's exactly it. I wish, I wish that had been better uh, spoken when we talked about the hunt. And I was trying to get through to you what I liked about that movie. Yes, that it wasn't liberals versus conservative. It was about rich versus poor people. And this is the same thing. This is about rich people taking advantage of disenfranchised people for their own gain. And feeling good about doing it for some reason. You know, like, yeah. still still justifying it and saying, no, no, we love black people. The ultimate compliment is that we're, we want to be you. Right. It's this very strange uh, subtlety to if that. There is no good white person in this movie. Uh, no. I, the closest thing we get is the blind guy who is like, oh, they're well-intended, but they don't know about race and then he ends up being the one who buys him because he wants his eyes. He wants, well, he wants his eyes, but he wants his artist eye, too. It's, yeah. it's very much not even about a physical thing with Chris. Like, and I think that's that's one of the more interesting aspects of, of him and this small, or, or the, of the movie, and this small sort of side character is, you know, at the end he of the day. What he's, he thinks he's better than the more blatantly racist characters right, in this movie. Right. But then he's still exploiting black people. Absolutely. It's it's you know, he's basically stealing art from uh from a black artist. Which I mean could say something about him being an art seller. Sure. About how he's making money off of he's rich and famous off of other people's work. I mean there's a whole history in this country of of uh like music, for example. You know, like right. black music was basically appropriated, popularized, whatever by white artists. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And you know, all the money went to all these white art. You know, I'm, I go to a show choir concert. I guarantee you, I have sung so many African uh, oh sure songs. Like, no hate to choir, but they definitely do steal a lot of songs um yeah there's well in 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 choir a lot of that uh stuff um is probably just i mean it's seen as traditional music now right yeah i just feel like there's a slight problem with like especially when you're an all-white choir sure no i get it it's there's it's hard, it's hard to know where 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 is the um i i sung where's the tribute line where's the homage to where are we should we be singing this are we paying tribute or are we doing damage M- me and 30 other white kids sure s- sung waiting in the water um <laughs> right. without knowing what the song was about we weren't taught and then later i found out oh that's a song about escaping being slaves yeah uh interesting it's it's very interesting. Yeah. I just feel like the cultural part of that song was left out. And I think there's a conversation that we're not going to get to the bottom of it's here. It's separate. But I think that is a conversation to have. And I think that's, uh, to back to this movie, like, that's an interesting angle to this movie, too. Is This is essentially a, a rich white man trying to appropriate Chris's art. And trying yeah. to, trying to, you know, he's a failed artist. And he thinks if he has Chris's eye... He can, he can be a success where he never was. Right. Uh, which is, I, I think, a, another really interesting, subtle angle to this movie. Right. I, I truly think that nothing in this movie is unintentional. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure it's all very intentional. And I think, I think Jordan Peele is probably a very intentional filmmaker. I think if you watch Us... Did you watch Us? I haven't seen it, but now I really want to. Us Us kind of fell short for me. Okay. But you can look at that movie and everything in it is it's very obviously intentional. Like everything is so specific right. in that movie. Like there's things that don't make sense, which means oh that that's a symbol for something. That stands for something. Like everything in there is Super spot on intentional. Do you think maybe that movie is more intended for black people? Do you think? No. No. Um, 
I that's not a read I got from it. Maybe I need to watch it again. I I think it's it's a more heady movie. It's a kind of trippier movie. Okay. It's a little. It's a lot weirder. And at a certain point, I I honestly I think I think where it goes wrong is when it tries to explain everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I kind of think if you would just let this be a weird head trip. I would I would appreciate this movie so much more. My thing is, I really liked the trippy parts of this movie. One of my favorite things was the sunken place. The hypnotism like, was great. Yeah, the way they visualized it with him falling and the colors and the stars, it was so beautiful. I had a weird. Um, I may cut this out because I don't want to be judged. Uh, I had a weird meditation flashback to where I had a guided meditation i did one time and then i felt like i was a smaller version of me inside the regular size version of me that's cool it was super cool but watching it this time i'm like oh my god i know what that's like now whoa you've um, been to the sunken i've been place. to the sunken place i put myself in the sunken place do and you think that uh guided meditation was an attempt to steal your body for your superior i wish they would have put it in a nicer house I just okay. <laughs> wish I would have been bought by somebody who lived in a better situation than I do. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, that would be ideal. If you're going to sell me, upsell me. Please. Come on. Uh, yeah. Put me in a nicer car. Um, no, I, uh, I, yeah, I love the sunken place. I love the, uh, Chris, um, I keep forgetting his name, Daniel, um, Daniel Kaluuya, uh, hit when he's, fighting the hypnotism but also falling prey to it and he just has like tears rolling out yes it is such a good performance i think he's he's such a solid actor in this movie he he really sells everything he's doing when he's upset yeah when he's trying to make nice with everybody but you can see he's very upset below the surface like he keeps finding his phone unplugged right when he's paranoid and when he is sad about his mom, all of the, his mom memories coming up, it is, I, I think that is just one of the most solid performances in this movie is that one scene, uh, him and Catherine Keener both are just putting on a clinic. She's. It's so amazing. Yeah. And then. And she goes, sink. And he, 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 like, he's fighting it and she goes, sink. And he just like falls ooh. through the, the mattress. It's so what, good. Yeah. One of my favorite things was. Um, once after everything went down, um, and she and her, she and him, uh, both see the, uh, teacup at mm -hmm. the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, like, smashes it, but then she still manages to slightly hypnotize him. Like, if you look at the fight scene where she has the knife and everything, uh, -huh. uh they make, uh, they make eye contact and, like, they hold it for... I swear that was meant to be him. Like she's just sort of like uh, still like, trying to put e him in the trance. Even and, without yeah. it, she's still managing she's still and then like he powerful. fights it. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, she's manipulative. Everybody in this movie is super manipulative. So it's, yeah, that that totally fits. White people. What are you going to do? Um, last thing I want to hit, have you seen the new Twilight Zone yet? The Jordan Peele Twilight Zone. I've seen one episode. Is it good? I haven't seen any of it. I, I liked it. It was about a meteor crashing and making people have toxic masculinity hmm. or, or heightening toxic masculinity. Um, it was an interesting episode, though. It's been shaped like like a set of balls. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everybody's pumped up. No, I haven't uh, seen any of it yet. I've been curious about it. Uh, I think we talked about this before. I just don't want to subscribe to CBS. Sorry, uh, CBS. Unless you want to sponsor us. Yeah, please. Um, I'll take a sponsorship just for a subscription plan. I um, I really want to see more from Jordan Peele. Yeah, that, I mean, that's part of why I want to... I'm, I'm a Twilight Zone fan, the original. Right. Yeah, uh, which is part of it. But yeah, I was, I'm very curious to see what Jordan Peele does as a filmmaker. And I don't want to see him... If he likes doing horror and that's what he wants to do, like, perfect. But 
I don't want the expectation to be put on him that like, oh, he's a horror director now. That's all I want to see from him to where like, right. you know, like if he wants to come back and do comedy again, or if he wants to do like just a straightforward drama, like I think Jordan Peele is one of those guys who isn't about what genre he's working in. I think he's a storyteller and whatever area right. he decides to work in, he's going to excel at that if he's left alone to do what he wants he, to do. He could do a movie musical if he wanted I think he to. probably could. And I would probably, I'm not even a fan of musicals, and I would probably go watch it if Jordan Peele made one because I think he he just, he does, even Us, which was not my favorite, was interesting enough. It, you you got to respect him as a filmmaker to go and and check it out. He has ideas and he's competent. I the more I think about it, the more I feel like Key and Peel was like almost his him practicing, like because they do they do a bunch of different like obviously it's all comedy and it's all skits right, but like the tones of them while wildly yeah. vary some stuff is a little darker some of it's yeah. uh it's all over the place some of it's uh there's a lot of social commentary in that as well um, right but yeah it's uh yeah uh, plus the comedy horror uh parallel yeah is, is you know tension relief i'm i'm not saying relief. it yeah it's not good on its own i i just feel like that was partly a way of him heightening sure. his directing abilities i think so um that's that's all i got you got anything else i i don't know i i think that's it this was your pick if you got anything else man i we've kind of covered everything shout it out okay cool i uh, recommend good halloween movie oh totally all right i i don't know for halloween specifically i look more for like slightly whimsical Okay. Uh, slightly less. It's this a little, is a more it's serious. A little heavy. It's yeah. a little heavy for Halloween. And also, it's a bit light on the horror aspects. Not light, but there's more social commentary Again, and you're drama. Wh- you're white. Okay, let's True. say it's a brain transplant that turns you from being gay to being straight. Is that more horrific to you? I can read the horrific aspects of this without having to relate it. No, I'm asking. This this is back to my question before about is there a different level of scary to this movie? If you are, I I understand. I think that would have to be a totally different movie, but that would probably tap into something. Yeah, Uh, That's what I'm saying. I I think this movie is very scary to some people. And for us, it's, it's... it's a scary movie. We understand where the the fright comes from, but people who live the real world scariness of being black in America every day, I think, are going to have a different level of of fright to this. I I think that's true. I I didn't mean to downplay the no no. I don't think you, you downplay it. Yeah. I just say I think some people will find this movie scarier than than others do. That's natural when you have a subject uh, like this. Yeah, I think so. It's um. Yeah, I think I think this movie's suspenseful all the way through, and where I think it is fun, I think there's enough comedy in it. I I think this is a good if you're looking for something scary uh, for Halloween. Uh, a lot of people like to watch horror during Halloween, and you're right. Right. A lot of people, it is fun, whimsical slasher movies are fun because they're not really scary outside of like jump scares. Right. I think this movie is this movie is going to make you heavier. think more right. than maybe some people want to this is during a, a This is not a holiday. seasonal uh uh horror movie, but I would say if you're looking for something that's genuinely suspenseful and frightening for your Halloween uh, right. marathon, I I think you can't go wrong with this movie. Just know there's not a single pumpkin in sight. Not one. Not one. It does look like it's kind of fall though. It's nice. Interesting. It is nice. Um, I would recommend this movie. Though. Absolutely, I think I think that goes without saying. We've been ranting about it for a long time, right? Um, all right, uh, let's close that out and move on to shout outs. You got a shout out this week, Oz, or you I, want me to go? I do have a shout out. All right, let's have it. My shout out is Julia Nickel. I believe is that how you say it? Um, Nolke. Nolke. Okay, I would yeah. Say. That sounds more right. 
Um, she has a YouTube channel and spell it. It's N O L K E. Good. Okay. Uh, and her videos are just genuinely some of the funniest things I've seen. Uh, it's just like four to five minute skits. Uh, w- the one that I saw first was just straight comedy sketches, like improv. Yeah, it's, or, it's a straight yeah. up. Um, it's not improv though. It's heavily scripted. Okay. I think. Um, the one that I saw was her explaining, uh, quarantine to her past self. Okay. Um, and it was just so funny, uh, because it was like, oh, well, there's no way 2020 can be worse. Uh, remember the wildfires <laughs> and, and she's like totally forgetting all the things that happened in January because of how much worse things have been. Right. Uh, it, it just put a fun spin on quarantine and I think we could all use a little comedy at this point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I, she makes a bunch of very funny videos like that usually with her playing all the parts okay yeah cool what about you i have a youtube channel as well uh this one is called long lost friend studio and it is cartoonist vince doris he's a illustrator he does a comic strip called the untold tales of bigfoot uh but this is him drawing typically just kind of like a daily sketch kind of thing. He doesn't do them daily, but it's him and his friend, Michelle Miller. And she does, uh, this really interesting, mostly it's Vince drawing, but once in a while it will be her like crafting these things out of felt. She's making like the, these little plush sculptures. Okay. It's, it's very cool. Uh, but it's like time lapses of that. He, he'll draw like Scooby-Doo villains or, uh, Uh, He's done monsters. He did like Godzilla. He's done Freddy Krueger. Just these small uh, sketches that he does and they're time lapse and they're just providing comment. He's talking about how they're drawing and they make jokes and and do a bunch of just fun stuff in there. It's a really just fun YouTube channel. They're typically, I'm going to say, eight to ten minutes long. Uh, Just these little slices of fun drawing and and conversation conversational comedy videos it it sounds like a good in look on like art and making stuff yeah it's it's really it's there's some cool process stuff they do, they've done a couple sculpture things and that's interesting to me because i don't do that right um, but yeah as just somebody who draws i like to watch other people draw i like to see pens that he's using techniques that he's using um, and he usually talks a little bit about it, but there, it's also just all in fun. They're having a good time and they're cutting up and, right. uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a cool art and, uh, conversation, lighthearted art videos. So, uh, give that a look. It's long lost friends studio on YouTube. All right. That sounds good. At this point, I want to thank you for listening to this episode of The Picture Show with Austin and Phil Rude. If you enjoy our show, please leave a review on your podcatcher of choice. It really helps our visibility and helps us grow the show. That's true. And another way you can help us grow is to tell people about us. Friends, family, random strangers on the street. Please, flag down random people. Uh, Keep a six-foot distance, though. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure if you just tell stray cats... They'll spread the word. Oh, they are big gossips. That's very helpful. Yeah. Uh, th- that just about does it. That does just about do it. It's my pick next week. What do you got? I have got The Witch. The Witch. Or, as you may have seen it written, The Vavitch. Vavitch. Uh, yeah. Colonial, uh, sort of pilgrim times. Salem? Uh, Kind of, but it's it's about this family that has been cast out of their religious community, and they make a homestead out on uh, in the wilderness, and then some very strange things start happening, and religious uh, fanaticism. Um, there is a rumored witch in the woods nearby. A baby goes missing. A lot of just crazy. It sounds like the village. Uh, it is, 
like a setting very similar to the village, but I'm I'm not trying to be like oh it, it's derivative. Hey, I, I like the village. I know I'm in the minority there, but this is uh, it's very much a slow burn. Uh, it's very kind of like old, old speak. Uh, we're gonna watch right. it with the subtitles on. It's very hard to understand. Okay, otherwise. I'm but thank you. I absolutely love this movie. I I and I think like this is a. Just very creepy, very menacing kind of movie. I think we're going to have a good time talking about it. Okay, it sounds very Halloween-y. I, it kind of is, because it's like the old, you know, the old school witches with buckles on their hats. and so, Like, it's right. from this time period. The Salem stuff, you know, with the weird clothes and, uh, yeah, it's... I, and it's Hocus Pocus vibes. Sure, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really strange, um, kind of old world stuff but it's it's very very creepy it's very menacing kind of devil worship movie well Uh, well now i can't wait uh yeah we're gonna have a good time with it austin what do you got for social media this week uh the same i always do uh austin.n.ru every podcast is somebody's first that's true that is true uh that's on instagram and tiktok and twitter all right, I am philrude.com. You can get all my social media handles there, and all of our episode information is there, as well as YouTube links. I do drawings for every episode, and I post them on YouTube. Okay. Austin, you want to read our credits? Sure. We do everything ourselves. There you have it. We'll see you next time on The Picture Show. See ya. Mm-hmm.